Hello, hello and welcome in Yair. We are still in Yair on the Herbo for the uh, French Olympic week. This is the uh, last day before the final. Tomorrow we will have the final of the 10 Olympic classes. And it will be our last day for that show uh, uh, here with you. So we are very pleased for the last show to have with us Stephanie Rogue from USA. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, Stephanie, you were in Palma in end of March. You are here in Yer, so you're never at home. <laughs> well, yes, we've been spending a lot of time in Europe and we're definitely not complaining about it. How long do you stay in Europe when you come for different regattas like that? Um, it kind of depends on, on where we are in the season. Um, these two events were important to us, so we stayed over here um, for both the events and um, enough training time leading up to both of them to feel comfortable in the venues. So, um, we did not go home be between Palma and Yer. Um, actually, my crew did, but I didn't. Um, but yeah, we've been enjoying our time over here so far. Okay, so we are not at the end because you are in final tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> how That's was? Like yeah. How was your week here in Yer? Uh, it's been a really fun week of racing. Um, you know, we obviously had all different conditions here and. Um, We've been really excited about the racing and um, today was uh, an intense battle in the fleet and um, we were happy to post some good results and, and move up the overall leaderboard. You are one time Olympian in Japan. Yes. I think you expect to be a second time. <laughs> well, we have a lot of work to do between now and then, um, but we're excited about the momentum our team has and um, yeah, we'll see what the next year brings. Before next year, next summer, Probably you will be also in Marseille this summer for the test event. Do you already know if you are the crew for the Team USA? Um, our selections were Palma and Yer, um, and we have won those selections. So we're excited to go to the Olympic test event, and we'll be spending some time in Marseille in May and June as well. Okay. And after the test event, you have also a big event with the World Championship, still in Europe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you spend all your time in Europe, in fact. <laughs> Could you expand to the, to the different person who are watching why it is so important this uh, World Championships? This year's World Championship is the opportunity to qualify your country for the Olympic Games. So um, the top eight or nine countries overall, I forget the exact number, will qualify um, for the Olympic Games. So yeah, it'll be an all-out battle at the world to qualify the country and, and perform well at the top of the fleet. And what will we think in first when you go to, to Den Haag? It is the qualification of the nation or a, a, medal, a medal for you? Well, if we medal, then we get a qualification spot, so <laughs> both. <laughs> okay. Um, what do you think about the, the 49er class for women? Is it a, a strong fleet or, or is, is it, I uh, don't know, is that very strong, I think, to yeah, the Brazilian, for the example? really really strong right now there's a lot of good athletes um, sailing right now and you know we've got tons of medalists within the fleet and a lot of Olympians and it's really tight racing and it's just been really fun and we're we're really excited to be racing the best in the world and as you told me for Team USA you're also two big crews so it will be difficult I think for you yeah we've been pushing each other really hard and it's been an, ex yeah. an exciting battle and that's that's important for you to be too strong crew because it's helped you to be better? Oh, it's Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we like to push each other hard. Okay. Thanks, Stephanie, to be with us. And now we have nice images of IQ Foil. Enjoy. Um, I really like the venue here, it's a good place and next year is going to be the last chance qualifier so that's one point to go here but also it's a really good uh, pre-event for our European Championships in two weeks. I hope to get some sailing done today so that we can get our fourth drop and that will push me up close to Matthias and hopefully bump me into first going into the finals tomorrow. Good starts will probably be my focus for today because I'm assuming we'll be racing slalom. It's just quite light today, but mainly starts and my work rate that win will be my biggest focuses. I think it's really good for like this French South Coast. It's like kind of either or, like really strong or super light. 
and we've been super lucky this week that we, we got to do quite a lot of races in both. Hopefully today we'll get a few more light wind races in. The conditions go, don't get to me too much anymore, but it was definitely tricky the last couple of days. I preferred the first two days, it was much nicer when the wind was here in the offshore conditions. Um, I think for sure there's things to improve in both types of conditions, um, but I kind of like both. It's so different type of sailing, like the one you really have to just like, you're fighting with the, yourself and the equipment to, to keep going, and the other one is very much like the physical part, you have to pump the sail, and so yeah, I like both. <laughs> So during the images, we change our guests and we are very pleased to have a vice president of world setting. This is Mr. Thomas Chamara. Thank you to be with us today in Yair. Pleasure. Good afternoon. Thank you to be here. You know very well the Yair week, the French sailing week, because you were a team leader of Poland before and now you are here as vice president. What is your view of the event? I can only congratulate uh, running this event in such a spectacular style. Uh, it's been always one of my favorite, if not the most favorite one, uh, coming here with all these challenges related to the weather that we can't control yet, but that's the beauty of sailing. But uh, I mean, uh, after COVID, after some break, uh, it's good to be here once again, especially having seen sailors happy uh doing racing uh, with all the support of the organizers uh, race officials all the technical staff many volunteers so yeah that's that's the beauty of sailing thank you thank you um we are probably the second more important important event this year but the season is very strong this year for the olympic class uh, could we speak about the next event in france which is a test event in marseille uh, absolutely. It's, uh, everybody knows that the Olympic cycle has been shortened because of uh, delay of Olympics in Tokyo. So right now we have another challenge, Paris 2024, which you French should be proud and you are definitely proud of. Uh, and sailing, as usually, we are a little bit separated. This time uh, from Paris, we will be in Marseille, which means that uh, uh, you will be sailing in a similar water as, uh, waters as, as we are having today in the in air. Well, it is uh, definitely an important event. Uh, it's going to be the test uh, not only for the sailors, but uh, for the organizers to uh, uh, realize all the challenges, uh, to realize all the pros and cons, and to effectively run the Olympics next year. So uh, the World Sailing staff and uh, board will be very much involved, uh, especially uh, my colleague Jan Rocherier and uh, Sarah Kenny from uh, Australia. As far as I know, President Chuan Haili also planning to be there. So uh, we are trying not to disturb the event, but definitely to help uh, in all the activities in uh, running them properly. In August, there, there, are, there is another big event, which will be the, the World Championship in Danag. Why is it so important? Yeah, I mean, uh, in reality, it's even bigger than a test event because test event is limited to one team, one uh, person per event. Uh, the Sailing World Championships, which will be in Den Haag and Sevening and Waters, will be even bigger because uh, the number is a little bit almost unlimited, <laughs> almost I'm saying, but that's going to be a very important event in terms of qualification, Olympic selection. Um, uh, that will be first uh, Olympic selection event for the countries. So uh, numerous countries uh, in particular events uh, will be taking the qualification. Uh, after that, there will be some other opportunities for those who wouldn't succeed in, in the Hague. Uh, there will be uh, class world championships, there will be regional uh, qualifications, and effectively uh, top ones will con compete uh, for, the, for the medals and uh, for the Olympic success. But uh, effectively, it's it's pretty busy year for all the sailors, uh, all the teams, and uh, but you know, I'm especially happy that uh, sailing came back after a uh, drastic situation we have had with COVID. And uh, as I said, uh, it's good to be here, good to see people, and good to see that the, uh, the process and the calendar is going on. To finish, could we have just uh, your point of view of the Poland team? You know them very well. What, what do you think of the actual team? 
I mean, a tempting question, and, but of course, I mean, I'm Polish, so <laughs> my heart will be a Polish team always, whatever happens. But yeah, I mean, uh, we have a pretty challenging team uh, in this event. I've seen uh, 49ers, uh, they are almost on top. Uh, they, they are contesting for second place. It will be very interesting medal race. Some other people uh, are still fighting for better position for some improvements, especially uh, Agata Barwinska in Ilka 4. Uh, sorry, Ilka 6, of course. <laughs> uh, too many Ilkas. And, uh, and of course, we have some other pretty good, strong teams in, in IQ Foil. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, our uh, 49er guys, the other ones, then uh, and, uh, the ones uh, contesting for the uh, second place, uh, they didn't say last words also. So, I mean, uh, we are still in a very, let's say, safe position just behind the medal. So next steps should be a little bit higher. That's a dream to, to go up and to uh, not to be worse than the French team is. <laughs> thank you. Thank you to be here with us today. Uh, it is our last show uh, um, this week. Yeah. And uh, tomorrow we will be live on the medal races. You have a live tracking on our website. It is soft.ffwall.fr. So you can go on the website to see all our show during the week. And we hope to see you next year for next Claremont show. Thank you. Bye bye. à foil hein. donc pour les kites on a quelque chose de similaire le foil est un peu plus petit mais le, le principe est le même dans l'eau on a la partie euh, L principale du foil c'est comme un avion hein. donc euh, ça va porter euh, vers le haut et c'est ce qui va permettre à la planche ou au kite de voler au dessus de l'eau quand la planche navigue hein, l'eau vient frapper l'aile sur le bord d'attaque hein, sur l'avant de, de l'aile et plus je vais mettre d'angle, plus je vais pouvoir décoller facilement. On voit qu'il y a aussi une petite aile derrière. Et ben c'est comme dans l'avion, hein, vous avez les ailes et vous avez aussi une petite aile derrière. Hein, donc qui permet de stabiliser l'ensemble et d'avoir un vol relativement stable. Ben là en fait on a quatre foils. On n'est plus sur un seul élément et sur lesquels on ne pouvait pas régler en navigation un élément par rapport à l'autre. Là, on a quatre éléments, dont deux foils principaux. Et la grosse différence par rapport à ce qu'on a vu sur les, les planches, c'est que chaque élément est réglable de manière indépendante. Ce foil, une fois qu'il est dans son boîtier, on a cette partie-là qui coulisse et qui va permettre de régler l'inclinaison vers l'avant ou vers l'arrière du foil. Et donc, ça va changer son angle d'incidence. Et c'est comme ça qu'on va gérer la portance des différents pieds sur lesquels est et poser, on va dire, sur l'eau le, le NACRA 17. La partie qui est hors de la coque, c'est tout ça. Hein. Et suivant la hauteur où vole le, le bateau, on a euh, plus ou moins de, de surface de foil dans l'eau. Le bateau est hors de l'eau, donc le bateau maintenant vole au près et au portant. Quand il y a suffisamment de vent, ça apportait vraiment beaucoup plus de vitesse, plus d'équilibre de la part des, des, de l'équipage. Et donc nos réglages doivent être de plus en plus fins pour atteindre les vitesses maximales. Au niveau sensation, le bateau a pris un petit upgrade et franchement, il est vraiment, vraiment sympa. Pour un petit 17 pieds, il va très très bien. Moins on a des choses qui traînent dans l'eau, plus ça va vite, mais moins on a de contrôle. Il faut trouver le bon compromis entre les deux.